When we hear politicians and even some scientists talk about climate change, it's easy to be left with the impression that all we need to do is build lots of low carbon technology by 2050 or even by 2030. Wind turbines, nuclear power stations and solar panels, we always hear about these. But such careless language is seriously misleading. Our concern about climate change relates to rapidly rising temperatures. And what we know from repeated and really careful scientific work is that these rises are driven by the total amount of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases we put into the atmosphere. When we burn fossil fuels, we emit carbon dioxide, some of which remain in the atmosphere, affecting the climate for thousands of years. But is a rising temperature such a big problem? Well, as the temperature rises, so we're going to see an increasing range of impacts from disruption to rainfall patterns, more severe droughts, increasingly intense storms, rising sea levels, greater flooding, and even hotter heat waves. There remains a lot of uncertainty around some of these things, but only really in the detail. We're confident that the impacts we're already witnessing are only really set to intensify. So far, we've seen a rise of a little over one degree Celsius, but unless we act immediately, we're heading for two degrees C of average warming by around the middle of the century, and three or four by the end of the century. Recognising all of this, national leaders came together in Paris in 2015 and agreed to take action to hold the temperature rise to well below 2 degrees centigrade and pursue efforts to not exceed 1.5 degrees centigrade. If we're going to meet the 2 degrees C commitment, scientists have estimated we can emit at the most around 1,000 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide. That is, we have a carbon budget of 1,000 billion tonnes. Say it quickly and it sounds a lot. But that was in 2011, and it's now 2017. And we've emitted around one quarter of that carbon budget. And as we're focusing here on energy, some allowance also has to be made for the carbon dioxide that comes from deforestation and from chemical processes such as steelmaking and cement manufacture. At current rates of emissions from our energy system, we've got well under 20 years of carbon budget left for 2 degrees centigrade and just a handful of years for 1.5 degrees C. But is it all hopeless? Is 2 degrees centigrade, which in itself is a very dangerous compromise for many, any longer possible? In my view it is, just. First, we need to begin a Marshall-style decarbonisation of low carbon energy supply. Similar in scale to the post-war reconstruction of Europe, with much of our productive capacity retooled to build very low carbon and zero carbon energy supply. At the same time, we have to start to electrify most of the energy system. But even if we begin this now in earnest, it will not deliver the necessary reductions in carbon emissions to meet the Paris commitments. So second, and also beginning immediately, we need to ratchet up the efficiency of our energy use, whether it's in our cars, our laptops, our fridges or our heating. But on top of all of this, governments will need to put in place policies to stop us spending any money we may save on yet more high carbon activities. They need to guard against what we often refer to as the rebound effect. Finally, though technologies are a prerequisite, they are insufficient. Delivering immediate reductions in energy use and hence fewer carbon emissions by high energy users is now critical. There's a huge asymmetry in individuals' carbon dioxide emissions. Very approximately half of global emissions arise from the activities of just 10% of the global population. But does this asymmetry really matter? Yes, and hugely so. If the top 10% of emitters reduced their carbon footprint to that of the average European, there would be a one-third cut in global emissions. The beauty of bringing equity into the equation is that it reframes the debate. It's no longer about trying to reduce the emissions from 7.4 billion people, but actually really focusing in, at least in the short term, on the 1 to 2 billion people who are responsible for most of the emissions. So what can we do? Surely it's the job of our leaders. Well, far from it. Society is a complex place with myriads of interactions. So whether it's a child questioning a parent about the pollution from their car, um, or employees pushing their pension firms to divest from fossil fuels, all these and thousands of other activities may only have a limited effect in themselves. It is then the job of policymakers and company CEOs to build on these examples and scale them up to drive wider social change. Ultimately, it is a partnership between bottom-up and top-down Leadership is needed at every level. In a very meaningful way, we all have agency. We all have a role to play. 